Well, Casey here with CL Creative, where I'm teaching you web design and web flow one video at a time here on YouTube. And today, we're talking about custom fonts. Sometimes the fonts that are inside of Webflow, probably all the time, the fonts that are come pre-baked into the Webflow project just aren't cutting it. You know, typography is everything. It can make or break a website. And so we need to know how can we add in custom fonts to our Webflow project. Let's jump into the computer and check it out. All right, well, here we are in the computer. This is my workspace for CL Creative. I have a couple of different starter projects here, my photography project and my CL Creative project. The way that you add in custom fonts is click these three button right here, and then you're gonna go over to the settings panel. If you're inside of the designer and you decide that you wanna add custom fonts, the other way that you can do that is navigating up here to the W webload thing, click on the three or hamburger menu, click project settings, and then fonts. So two different ways that you can get to the fonts section here. As you notice, I already have a couple of custom fonts that are added in, but say I wanted to add in another to my project. And so we'll just walk through how to do that here. Now there's two ways that you can do that. If you're happy with the Google fonts that come with the project or that, that you want to be able to load into the project, you can click on this drop down menu here and say, I want to add in a Leo. I can click on a Leo. I can pick the different variants. And then all I need to do is click add font and Aleo has been added to my project. Now that's super easy, super simple way if you're working with Google fonts to get that into your project. But here's the thing I want you to keep in mind doing it this way. Every time the page is loading, it has to pull these fonts in from Google. And so it's preferable to load these fonts, even if you're going to load Google fonts directly from your own project. So I'm going to go ahead and delete a layo, and I want to show you another way that we can add a layo to the project. And this will go for any custom font, but let me show you how you can add Google fonts to the project without using this connection right here. One of the sites that I like to use that makes it really easy to get to the fonts that we need is a site Google Web Fonts Helper, and I will link this down below. But if we go and we find the font that we were going to use, a layo, I don't even know what a layout looks like. It's just a random font that I chose, but you're going to have a font in mind that, that you want for your project. So I've chosen a layout, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the different styles that I want. So just for our sake, I'm going to select regular and 300. You just scroll down here to the bottom, and you notice there's a zip file. You can download this zip file. So let me move me over here so I can get access to that. Click on this, show finder, and this is essentially going to bring up our zip file of Aleo that we just downloaded. Now from here, we're going to have access to a number of different files, and you know all of these are going to, you know, this list could be much longer, but what they're doing is they're giving you a, a couple of different file formats, and that's the next thing that we need to talk about. What file format do you need to upload to the web? Because you can't just take your file or your font that is in the fonts folder on your computer and upload that font to the web. It's not going to be supported. So you have to make sure that you are going to use a web friendly font and Webflow supports a number of these W F F T T F O T F. Uh, they all even support W O F F 2.0 EOT and SVG. Now, if you look in this folder right here, let me just see if I can, nope, I guess I can't make this part bigger. But if we look in this folder here, we would see we have EOT, SVG, TTF, Wolf, Wolf 2. Uh, these are all the different web friendly fonts. Some of these are more friendly than the other. So which one do you use? One that I typically use is WFF. It's typically the smaller of the fonts, as well as it has a, a wide, uh, you know, support with different browsers. And so this is the one that I typically upload into my project. Now, from this point, what we've done is we have to determine that we want to use Aleo as our custom as our font that for our project. 
and we've gone to Google Font Helper and we have downloaded that particular file. Now, from, from this point on in the video, it, this is going to be the same process that you would go through if you got a font from somewhere else. I just happened to pick the Google font because it was easier for me to grab. Plus, it's going to show you how you can pull in Google fonts and use those in your project without having to make that connection every single time a web page loads. So from this point forward, keep in mind that, that putting in any other custom font that you get anywhere else on the web is going to be the exact same process. And I'm going to do this with the WFF font, the wolf font. So we'll go back to our Webflow project and we just go to this custom fonts field right here and we click the upload button and we navigate to our files. I'm going to upload the, the Aleo 700 as well as the Aleo wolf regular because these are the two that we brought down. So I'm going to highlight those. I'm going to click open and here's what you're going to notice. These fonts are going to load in your project. Now, here is a super important thing that you must do at this point. You cannot just click out of this page. You have to complete the step, two more steps. First step is going right here and seeing this is 700. So this is essentially a, a bold. So we're going to go down here and we're going to select bold here there's not a number that is associated with it telling us that it is a normal or regular font so its weight is going to be 400 so we need to do that first then the next thing that we need to do is click this green button here upload font if you do not click this button the font will not be in your project i've made this mistake before in the past so click that click that now if you come down here you're going to notice that aleo 400 and Aleo 700 is available to us. Again, this could be any other custom font that you want. The next thing that we can do is we have these fall by back fonts and Google will go in and they will, I mean, not Google, excuse me, Webflow will add in a fall back, fall back font for you automatically. You notice here that it is sans serif. We can go in here and we can edit that and put whichever one of these fonts right here that we have access to in this drop down menu as a fallback font. So know that you can do that. If essentially what that means is that if this font does not load for some reason, one of these other fonts, which is a fallback is going to load on your website. So you will have a website with text on it. I'm going to leave my fonts just like that. I'm good with how they are. The next thing that we need to do is go back to the designer. And here is where having a style guide is very important. Because we have uploaded some fonts and we want to change one of the fonts inside of our project. And so I want to make sure that I go to my style guide. And all my style guide, I have tons of different stuff. But one of the things that I do have are my heading tags and you know, a, a bunch of different things, right? It says all the styles for my entire project on this style guide. Now this is uh, FinSuite's client first. This actually happens to be the version one. I haven't switched my personal website to version two because, well, I don't want to rebuild the website. So I'm good with version one for now. But here's, here's what we need to do if we want a layout in our project. Now, if you want to use that throughout the entire project, you would click on the body tag here. And you're going to go over to this style selector. You're going to notice that you have a couple of different options when you click into it if there's nothing written in here. Now, on my body tag, I don't have anything written in. So I could click body all pages. And let me move myself back over here for the remainder of the video. And if you notice, I can go down to typography. And I can select one of these. And, and you, you see when I select that, the fonts in my project are changing because this is changing all of the fonts on the body like essentially all of the fonts in my web project are being changed at this point if i was to do that so that's one way that you could do that change all the fonts or the next thing that you could do say you just wanted to use a leo for your heading you're you're wanting to change out your heading styles you're good with your body text you're good with all of that well then you could click on your 
H1 heading here with inside of your Webflow project. If you have a style guide, like this is just, I have these HTML heading tags here for this. It's going to tell me what they look like. You notice there's nothing selected and I can click in and I have an HTML tag that I can select all H1 headings. Now, currently I have Archivo 700, but say I wanted to change that to Aleo 700. All I would need to do is find that in my list and change that. Now, if I click publish, that is going to be reflected across my entire project, wherever the H1 tags are. Now, for me, I have one other step that I, I have done, and this really corresponds with the FinSuite client first system. I have heading extra large. Now, this has been changed in version 2. Uh, to like heading H1, heading H2, heading H3. But in my project, it says heading extra large. This is really giving me a style that I can put on any heading in inside of the project. So if you're using a template like that, then you would need to go down and change the font on this as well. So anytime you typed in heading extra large in the style over here, it would be representative in the project. That's an extra step if you're using FinSuite's client first style guide, which I would highly recommend doing whenever you add in these special classes to control you know, the sizing of your headings without changing the heading tag up here. That is something that you can do. Now, after you have gone through your style guide, after you have mapped these fonts to your project, you would click publish and that is going to show up anywhere in your project. All right. Well, hopefully that was helpful for you as you learned how to add custom fonts to your Webflow project. If you want more videos like this, would you subscribe to the channel? And if you got value out of this video, smash that like button for me. If you have a topic for another video that you would like for me to cover, well, leave that down in the comments and I will try to make a video over that topic for you. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.